So let's talk about making components. Um, oftentimes people think that they need to carve the wax out of one giant thing and it maintains its integrity and uh, uniformity to it. And that's true, but uh, many times when you're doing all the effort to get down to that final form, you put in stresses in the wax that force it to break off and you end up repairing anyway. So I want to add some parts to make this ring and I want it to be relatively big. So. We're going to put some chunks of wax here over the knuckle, maybe some chunks of wax here. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a large coarse half round file and do some stock removal on the back of this wax to um, try and match this interior trough channel. So I've got a half round file that's not perfect, but pretty close. So let's just show you this is, this is my half round file. And so I'm just running that on the surface of my wax so I can cut a nice deep trough and it's gonna it's gonna cut very quickly um, because this file is extremely coarse this is a very good sharp half round file meant for cutting steel and so its tooth profile is huge by comparison let's uh, pull the needle file up for comparison so we have little tiny teeth and then these monster teeth. And so, depending on the material, um, this, this would fall into the category of file or rasp. But the bigger the tooth, uh, the more raspy it is, and the more stock removal you're doing. But when you change mediums from, like, wax to metal, all of a sudden, the, uh, the metalworking material acts like a rasp versus the uh, waxworking material, which is, you know, just not going to take off as much. So you'll find when you get um, wax working rasps, they have these huge barbs and the barbs are about the same as what you'd expect on a, a large file. They're just on your tiny needle file. So this is the quickest way to get your material down and um, I want a relatively uniform trough so you can see that I wasn't filing perfectly straight and there is a slight taper to my half round file. So it is important to take the time and rotate, you know, especially if you're dominant handed, if you're right handed or left handed, just know you're going to favor one side. And so when you rotate it, uh, generally it evens out whatever that handedness was doing when you were working. So we're just trying to get a good trough so we can start adding parts onto our wax. So I'll switch to time lapse now that I think I've covered everything you need to see, but in general, you can see we have a relatively good starting trough here. And you can see how, in theory, that would line up with our wax uh, appropriately. And then we'd have enough bulk material on the top to really work it there. So I'll go down maybe a little bit more and get this straightened out on time lapse. Okay, so we've roughed this out um, with the coarse half round file, and that's just so that we can match the profile of our top part. So we just want to make sure that we're relatively close with our alignment here. And that works out okay. So I could add a chunk here, and I could add a chunk here, and I could keep it coplanar, but that's no fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually cut this in half and then attach it on both sides just to be a little ridiculous. And so I'm going to take our Japanese saw. I'm just going to pick a slight angle that I want to cut at so that there's enough material on either side for me to goop off with. So, and I'm going to go with a relatively steep angle like so. So once we've cut through our material, now we can start adding our two components. So we can add, find the top, we can add one here, and we can add another here. And we can start setting up our assembly, like how do we want to melt these two pieces together, how do we want to get them to lay properly, and what does that look like as a ring. And so 
in terms of shapes, you can get an idea for your contours. And the trick is to leave two sides very, very flush so that they match with your side. And when you go to set them up to do your melting work, you want them to be stable enough to where you can come in with your hot tool and do some light poking, okay? And the trick to working with hot tools is to make sure <laughs> make sure that everything is going to um, stay still while you come in to do your, your melting operation. So you're coming in and you just want to get your hot tool ready and then psst, just hit it right there to hold it together and then go around and finish welding, wax welding everything together. So that hot tool is just allowing your material to get to the point of fusing.